good morning to each and every one. Thank you for tuning in again this morning. This is another beautiful Sunday morning and thank God for the blessings of this another beautiful day. God has been faithful to us once more this week and indeed we can say thank you Lord for your blessings on us. Thank you for tuning in this morning and I trust that as we continue studying the fruit of the Spirit that we will grow in our spiritual development and our spiritual knowledge of what God requires of us to, uh, to live a victorious life and to live a successful life and a life that is meaningful and happy, a life that will help us to enjoy our walk on this earth or in, in this earth as we prepare ourselves towards going to heaven. So this morning, the lesson that we are going to be studying on for is entitled The um, Fruit of Temperance. So remember we're studying on the fruit of the Spirit. Last Sunday we studied on the fruit of meekness. And today the subject is on temperance. Temperance. And I'm sure most of us struggle with this, um, this fruit, temperance. And it is something that we can, uh, I would say, master, but it takes a lot of discipline and it is required as Christians, ch children of God, that we possess temperance in our walk with God. So I trust this lesson will be of some enlightenment and encouragement to each and every one as we study. Again, I thank you for your um, support and for tuning in again this morning to this uh, Sunday school session. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again this morning because again, you've shown your faithfulness unto us by blessing us through another week and giving us, dear Lord, the privilege of once more being able, dear Lord, to herald your word, dear Lord, through this Facebook medium. Thank you for each one that is tuning in and for each one that is following this um, series of lessons, dear Lord. We pray that you will help me as I try to present your word this morning, that you will take charge of uh, everything, dear Lord, that should be said Give me wisdom and understanding and clarity of your word. Bless those who receive your word and hear your word, dear Lord, that they will understand the truth of your word, dear Lord, and that your Holy Spirit will convince them, dear Lord, of whatever they need to do in their lives to uh, improve their relationship with you. So bless us now, dear Lord, and we thank you for all that you have done and is doing for us as a people. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, the fruit of temperance. The fruit of temperance is our subject today. And the aim is to show the need to be temperate and have self-control. Having self-control. That is what we are looking at here this morning. Temperance in the sense of having self-control. And when we have that attribute, that fruit um, of the Spirit it, with us, we can master a lot in our lives. So, what is temperance? Uh, the, the introduction of the lesson says, there are six verses in the New Testament where we can find the word temperate or temperance. Even though there are only these six verses, the meaning of the word has a lot to do with our living, with our living the Christian life. In part, the word temperate means moderate in one's action, in one's speech, etc. Self-restraint, 
temperance means in part moderation, sobriety, the state of quality of being temperate, self-restraint, restrained in conduct, habitual moderation in the indulgence of a natural appetite, etc. And that last one there, a lot of us sometimes need to be very, very watchful on. So we see here that the word temperance or temperate uh, conveys self-control, the discipline that we need to, to have in our lives to control our desires, to control our temper, to control our appetite, to control the way we work, to control anything that we go about. We should learn to do it in temperance. The Bible says, do all things in moderation. Do all things in moderation. And if we find that we can um, bring ourselves into that way of discipline, we will find that our lives will be less stressful and we'll have less anxiety in our lives and we will be letting God discipline our spirit and he will help us to live a very fruitful and happy life when we allow him to do his part in those things. But we have the responsibility. God is willing to, to help us, but we have to help ourselves. That's where the problem is. That's where the, the, the breakdown is. We are not willing at times. We know, but we don't do. And what the Bible said, to him that knoweth and doeth not, right? There is consequences for that. So we should do what we are um, convinced and um, capable of doing. Um, okay, now our first scripture uh, scriptures are taken from 1 Corinthians 9, verses 25, 26, and 27, and verse 25 is also our memory verse. And I'll read those three verses, and then we will look at the meditations on that. And the, um, verse 25 says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible, speaking of the Christians. Therefore, so, run, not as uncertainly, so fight, I, not as one that beat at the air, but, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I preach to others, I myself should be a cast away. So here Paul was explaining that we all have to keep ourselves under constraint because others are looking at us and we want to be a good example. And we should be a good example in whatever in our Christian conduct. So Paul here, um, a meditation, those who desire to run and win in the Olympic Games put themselves in a rigorous training and would seem unreasonable that would seem unreasonable to many people. And we just went through the, um, that that um, Olympic um, season, and if you were taking time to, to watch some of it, you would have seen that those who participated in those games, how they had to, um, the discipline and the training 
that they had to go through was put to action and put to work on the disciplines that they were there in the Olympics to do. They just didn't get up um, and enter that um, arena or on the world stage. They had to prepare themselves in order to be there. And I mean, a lot of training had to go through those um, Olympians. So uh, you must live on food which you dislike. You, sorry, let me read that. I don't think I got that right. Let me start again. Those who do desire to run and win in the Olympic Games put themselves in a rigorous training that would seem unreasonable to many people. You must live on food which you dislike. Speaking of some of the things they have to go through. You must um, abstain from all delicacies, must exercise yourselves at the necessary and prescribed times, both in heat and in cold. So you see, they have to go through all these different um, temperaments in order to keep themselves fit and prepare themselves for that um, discipline that they are going out there to, to express. Uh, Both in heat and in cold. You must drink nothing cooling. Take no wine as formerly. In a word, you must put yourself under the directions of the pugilist as you would under those of a physician. So it, you have to put yourself under that great discipline and training. As you know, if, if you go to the doctor and the doctor would tell you what to do, what not to do, what to take and what not to take, how to um, go about your diet and all these things. The, the athletes in the Olympics have to go through these disciplines as well. So uh, what we're talking about here is temperance. And temperance comes about by exercising ourselves in discipline, okay? Verse 26 of this um, chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, says, uh, Therefore, so run not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beat at the air. Paul speaking. Only one could win in the, the um, competition that each one of those went in their discipline for. They're all going to compete, but only one will be getting that first prize. Yes, you have first, second, and third prize, the prizes. And if you get a third prize, you're still a winner. But not everybody is going to fit in those three categories, okay? Only one would win, and it was uncertain who that would be. But Paul speaks of a race that everyone can win if they run lawfully. So the Christian race we all can be winners. Remember that. We all can be winners. And we don't have to be the one who crossed the line first. But as long as we get in, as long as we have done what Jesus requires of us, and when you cross the line, he says to you, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Okay? That's what we're striving for. Um, verse 27 says, But I keep under my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I preach to others, I myself should be a cast away. So Paul said to the Corinthians people, people there that he needs to discipline himself, right? Whatever he says, he has to be careful in his words. When he's mingling with the people, he has to be discreet in what he, how he goes about is, 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 is mingling with people. Whenever he sit down to have a meal, he needs to be very careful that he doesn't show himself as a glutton, right? A glutton. 
he has to exercise temperance so that people won't look at him when he tries to tell them how to live the Christian life and said, well, you're not doing what you are preaching, right? So we have to be an example. So I keep my body under, he said, so he considered his body as an enemy. He must modify by self-denial. It must be a servant to his soul and not his soul a servant to the body. You, heard, you got that? It, it must be a servant to his soul and not his soul a servant to the body. He realized he must do that, le do that um, lest he lose out with God. So, as Christians, we have to be careful that whatever we do, in all that we do, we should be practicing to be, live a temperate life. Okay? Temperance is what we're talking about here. Be careful what you say. Um, don't be a person. You know, the Bible tells us, and I'll touch on this one here, if a man cannot bridle his tongue, you know what the Bible says? His religion is vain. So if we're giving to talking, talking, talking without any carefulness of what we're saying, just to be heard, just to, um, like Paul said, beating the air with words, without any substance, without any gravity to it. That is not required of a Christian. We need to be, let your word be few, the Bible says, okay? And be temperate in all things. Now let's move on. Um, let's look at Mark 8 and 34. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. That's Mark 8. Um, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. So to follow Christ comes with some self-denial. Jesus said it there. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, and that means me and you, if we're going to follow Christ, let him, let me, let you deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow him, Christ. So each one of us has a cross to carry. It might be different in size, in looks, in weight, right? In circumstances, but we all need to take up that cross, deny ourselves of the ease that might <laughs> come or we think we should have or we should go about. Sometimes it comes with a uh, not so good of uh, experience while you're carrying the cross. But if you are faithful in carrying that cross to the limit that God wants you to carry, there is going to be a very good result after you have done your part, okay? Uh, what does the meditation say on this? To be a disciple of Christ, we must surrender our all to His will. We cannot live for self, choose our own way, and still be a follower of Christ. So we have to give it to Christ and let Him work out our salvation in, by being obedient unto him. Okay, now let's look at um, 2 Peter um, 1 and the scriptures that are, are the verses that are chosen 
it's verses 5 through 8. But I would like to read from the first um, verse, 2 Peter chapter 1. I, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like um, precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. Now listen to these verses. Whereby are given unto, uh, unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these he might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Through lust. Right? And now this is where the, the, um, the, our lesson verses come in. And beside this, giving all diligence, this is verse 5, add to your faith virtue, add to virtue knowledge, and look at these righteous steps as we go down these verses. I'll read verse 5 again. And beside all this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the ending of the scriptures there. Now look at the meditation on those. In verse 4, Peter speaks of our being our speak of our being saved from our sins and being made partakers of the divine nature. Then he goes on and gives us an outline as to how we are to live for Christ. It takes faith to be saved. It takes faith to be saved. You have to believe that God is before you can uh, come to that place of having faith that God is and that God has the power to save you. So it takes faith to be saved. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, Peter speaks of our being saved from sin and being made partakers of divine nature. Uh, it takes faith to be saved, then we are to add to the following, to our salvation, virtue, which is courage or fortitude, normal excellence, right actions. Add these things to your knowledge, to your salvation. Okay, and then when you add virtue, then knowledge come, which is true wisdom. And then when you get that true wisdom, it helps you to be temperate add temperance, a proper and limited use of all earthly things that are just and right. Temperance, that's what we're studying about this morning. So if we have salvation, we get virtue through our salvation. Then from virtue, we come to knowledge. And then when we get knowledge, it shows us how to be temperate. temperate and then that helps us to show godliness which is living a holy life, including a deep reverence for God. And when we get to that stage, it helps us to now be brotherly towards our fellow uh, Christian. Brotherly kindness, which is loving your brother in the Lord and treating him right. Loving your brother and treating them right. And then when you get to that stage, it helps you to be more charitable and more giving. Paul says, love is the greatest of all. Love for God, love for truth, for the saints, for our family, for our enemies, right? So you see how this keep building as you become a Christian, salvation 
give you those working to become a better person. Okay? Peter says that if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful. So remember, we're studying about the fruit of righteousness. So if we follow these steps of, um, of salvation, it will help us not to become barren or unfruitful, but our lives will be enriched with the attributes and the fruits of the Spirit. Okay? You will never lose your salvation if you continue to walk in these principles. Okay? Um, now, Titus 2, verse 1 and 2 reads, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and in patience. We are to speak the things that become what? Sound doctrine. In Titus 1 and 16, Paul speaks of some who profess to know God, but their works prove otherwise. So he tells Titus, he must speak sound doctrine, the truth. Then he were to be sober, sober in mind, sober in your indulgence, in substance, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience. This was and is the standard of the church of God. And thus we would be an ex a good example to others if we live out those principles. Okay? We read in verse 3 that the aged woman were to live the same high standard. And in addition, they were to teach the younger women to be sober, to love their husband, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, etc. This is a great need in our world and in the church today. All teaching is not to come over the pulpit as this makes plain, what we just said there, right? So each one of us, and especially the older um, heads in the church or the older men, the Bible talks about, and the older women should be leading an exemplary life. And they should be able to guide the younger ones how to live a disciplined Christian life. Okay? They should not be the ones that gossiping and tearing down, but they should be the ones who are helping to lift up, instruct, and to help the younger Christians to become established in the work of God by showing them those good examples that I just read through a while ago. Okay? Moving on, Philippians 3 and 8 says, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. This is Paul speaking. And he's speaking of the sacrifices that he himself had to make in order to win the acceptance of Christ and to live in the will of Christ and God, to do the things that God requires of him. Paul was not a pauper. He was not a poor person. He came from a well-to-do family, as we would say, and he was a well-educated man and deeply religious. But when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, there came a great change in his life. He forsook all for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And in the end, it was not loss but gain. 
That was the way Paul looked at it. He says, I count the loss as dumb. Violence draws our refuse. To live a justified life, a sanctified life, and to have eternal life in the world to come. So Paul put himself in the place where God could use him by denying, sacrificing, right? The things that he could gain in this world because of his education, because of his ability to, you know, accomplish a lot of things in a selfish way or through self or through his own um, way of getting things in life. But he said he sacrificed these things for the excellency of knowing Christ and to be obedient unto Christ. So, a temperate life, a life of temperance, comes, like I said earlier, with a lot of disciplines in our lives, in all our lives, in all our actions, in all our, 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 our the things that we um, do in our lives needs to come under discipline. Okay? The conclusion. There are many things involved in, the living, the, in living the Christian life. However, everything about it is good and profitable. Our aim today is to show the need of temperance and self-control. Millions in the world today have problems, murders, fights, broken homes, wretched lives because they did not have self-control. Or, possible, we should say, they did not allow Christ to have control. Again, Everything about the gospel is good. And the good thing about it is that Christ made it possible for everyone to have it. If today your life is out of control, could I suggest to you to turn it over to Christ and let him have control? The footsteps of a good man, the Bible says, are ordered by the Lord. He will lead you in the paths of righteousness. So that's where God wants to lead us, in the paths of righteousness. So I trust that this lesson has enlightened you to take some inventory of your personal life and if you are not walking in the steps that Christ would want you to walk, try to ask God, submit yourself under the influence of the Holy Spirit and let the Spirit of God lead you and build you in these areas that you might be weak or you might not have seen the light on it before. If you are enlightened today, remember our bodies belongs to God, and God wants to dwell in us, and if he's going to dwell in us, he needs a good, clean temple in which to live. So may God bless you. Have a great week. Thank you again for tuning in, and walk in the discipline of temperance as you go through this week. Father in heaven, thank you for the time. Thank you for this lesson. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the viewers, dear Lord. Thank you for each one. We pray that you will bless us. And help us, dear Lord, to put on the disciplines of whatever we might find ourselves short of or lacking in, dear Lord, that we will work on those things, that our lives, dear Lord, will be in the place where you can work with us and you can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Bless us now as we go through this week and we give you thanks for all that you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. Have a great week.